up, Craig? Hello, welcome to today's episode of Juicing the Numbers, your, your, your statistics and sports podcast. Uh, I am I am one of the hosts, Joshua Tracy. And I'm the other host, Corwin Heller. And this is the podcast of the people. These are the people statistics we're talking about here. Welcome to the revolution. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Uh, how you doing? It's, 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 it's September 20th here, right around 1130 in the morning. So once again, we're recording this pre the large slate of NFL games that are happening. So again, we will not be talking about them. They have not happened, but I'm excited to watch my team lose again. <laughs> Corwin, hey, how are you feeling about this this, uh, this 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 NFL Sunday? Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to it more than I was last week, just because I feel like I was so out of it last week. Um, that being said, um, I just I'm mostly excited to just hang out on a cool fall day in a sweatshirt, sweatpants, and just lay around and watch football. Oh, I have not gotten out of my hoodie since the first day it dipped below 70. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, uh, this is the only way I want to live. I'm in a hoodie and sweatpants and life could not be jollier. Hmm. Uh, I'm all aboard. <laughs> uh, any, anyway, shall we talk about some stats? Yeah, dude, I'm ready. All right. Well, uh, li- I, wanna, I want to talk about Gary Sanchez. <laughs> Sure. Um, so, so for anyone unaware of who one of the most controversial hitters on the Yankees is, um, and honestly, possibly one of the most controversial hitters in baseball, just because of the high, high ceiling and the low, low floor. Um, I actually, that's a good starting introduction. Uh, he's 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 a catcher for the for the Yankees. Um, Corwin. Have you ever seen a player with this high of a ceiling and this low of a floor? Uh, Byron Buxton comes to mind, just off the top of my head. That being said, I've never seen someone who's hit both essentially ceiling and floor so consistently over their career. Like We know Byron Buxton has a wild ceiling. We've never seen it. I feel like we've seen Gary Sanchez's floor a lot. And we've seen his ceiling a little, but we have seen it. And I just, I, you know, so much more than I do as far as, you know, Gary Sanchez and what he can do. But man, I have no idea uh, what we should expect moving forward. And, and that's kind of what I wanted to talk a little bit about because it's, it's a biz- If you read, box scores Gary Sanchez looks like a bad player for large stretches of time and there are indeed stretches of time where he is quite bad um <clears throat> the last two seasons not you know excluding this season the the issue has long been sliders low any pitch low in the way honestly him just flailing at but the most perplexing part of him and I am mainly reminded of his uh 2018 campaign in which he hit 186 over the course of a full season. Well, 89 games for him, but still over 370 plate appearances. Is that he seemed, when he hit the ball, he seemed to knock the shit out of it. Right to a guy. Like, every time he'd have a hard hit ball, it seemed to, like, find a guy. And I've never seen something quite like it. Because so like here's his OPS plus by season. Uh, I'm gonna start with 2016 because in 2015 he only had two games and I don't even remember those being there. Uh, 2016 OPS plus of 168 for a catcher. Oh my god. Uh, 2017 126. 2018 89. 2019 118. 2020 79. It's been a very uneven career so far. Right. But now, Corwin, I would like to read you Gary Sanchez's um, exit velocity by season. You ready? Yes. Again, starting with 2016, average exit velocity, 92.7. Wait, hold on. It moved all the years around. Give me one second. There we go. All Mm -hmm. right. So 2016, 92.7. 
2019, 90.8. 2018, 90.3. 2019, 91.2. And 2020, 92.5. It's a lot. That is quite a lot. And what's impressive is that the, the shifts are here really aren't like that big. You know, like, Mm-mm. like it's not like there's a weird, huge, colossal drop off, or that any of the types of drop offs really um, led to any largely negative results, because they truly haven't. It is a, it is an absolute mystery to me where where the error lies in in the Gary Sanchez. So to to look at it another way, um, his hard hit rate by per, as a percent, all right? Hard hit rate, I season. Okay, here's looking at it another way. 2016, mm-hmm. 48.6, stupid high. <clears throat> uh, 2017, 43.1. So it came down pretty pretty precipitously there. But 2017 was a really good year for Gary Sanchez. Right. 20, 2017, All Star season. 126 OPS plus, uh, like it's 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 a it's a good season, so that's not a big deal at the in terms of actual results. Uh, 2018 41.6, so it went down again, and this was a bad, this was a worse uh worse year for Gary. 2018, right? I have that right. Yeah, I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, 2019 42.3 percent, and it was an up year, and then this year. 50.6%, the highest of his career, and his OPS is the lowest it's ever been. That's not great. It's just confounding, isn't it, though? Like, Oh, absolutely. He's knocking the crap out of the ball. 50.6% of, the, 50. of all of his hit balls are hard hit, which is fucking dumb. And, and yet, his his batting average, uh, his actual batting average is 154, uh, and for some reason his expected batting average is 197, and I don't even understand that one. Uh, his expected but, is 197. Yeah, I don't even I don't even think I get that one. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't know why because his launch angle is 21.2 degrees, uh, which I guess is just too high. He has to bring mm. that down. Interesting. But yeah, the, his exit velocity, uh, average exit velocity, as I said, 92.5, the highest it's been since 2016. His barrel ball percent is 19%, the highest of his career. Uh, I mean, like he's got 15 barrels, barrel balls so far this season. He had 32 all of 2018. Like, he, he's knocking the shit out of things. And I guess his launch angle marginally too high, but it's also just insane to see like when I tell you, Corwin, half of his mm-hmm. balls seem to go directly to people who are standing around. They seem to all go directly to people standing around. It is a wacky thing. What's his BABIP again? So, oh, his BABIP. I'm not sure I actually have that in front of me. Uh, I can look it up real quick. I can do it. I can do it. I don't know if I can do it. I uh, I can I can do it. I have his other page up. I'll just look up his uh his splits. It should be there. Uh, uh under advanced stats. Uh it 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 might be. I might have gone mm. to the wrong page. No, I found it. Um his his 2020 BABIP is 159. That's really bad. Well, that's just also crazy because his BABIP is one fifty nine, but his but his average exit velocity is ninety two point five miles per mm-hmm. hour. <laughs> like, like you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like for you to have that hard hit of a ball, and for your batting average on balls in play to be that low, like it's it's unbelievable how lopsided it is. You know what I mean? Like if you look at it. His batting average is 154. His BABIP is 159. The fact that they're that close just screams that he is just the most unlucky guy in the world. I, well, yeah. You know, we could tell that already, but that's not like, great. Like, if your hard hit percent is, is over 50, 
Mm-hmm. Your barrel balls percent is over like 15 and his is 19 and an exit velocity of 92 point. Like, like these are all stats that are really, really good. Not even just kind of good, really good. <laughs> and his BABIP is, is pathetically bad because it seems like, and I feel I will continuously feel vindicated in looking at Gary Sanchez stats and finding reasons and excuses for him. It really does feel like he, he's the world's unluckiest person. Do you know what his contact rate is? Um, on, let me see if it's on this page. Uh, it might be. Uh, it's not on this one. <laughs> Let's try another one. Uh, advanced stats? That sounds right. Because I know baseball reference keeps track of that. Fuck me. I do not see it. Hmm. Oh, it's probably one of those stupid um, fucking uh, abbreviations. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It. And I don't know which one it is. <laughs> yeah, I got. I don't got a fucking clue. Yeah. Oh well. Story of this podcast, actually. Yeah, truly so. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't see. I don't even know where I would be looking, and. Uh, it's evident because I ain't fucking seeing it. And anyway, um, so so this season, just just to put it into some context, Gary's barrel ball percent of nineteen is better than every single season Mike Trout's ever played. Which, in and of itself, is batshit insane. Gary's exit velocity this season of 92.5, the second best of his career, would be the third best season of Mike Trout's career. So, right up there. Yeah. You know what's actually crazy? His launch angle of 91.2 isn't even like that far off of like where Mike Trout's typical season is. It'd be the third highest of Mike Trout's career. So, I'm not even now I'm doubting now I'm doubting that too. Uh, Gary's hard hit percent of 50.6 would be the second best of Mike Trout's career. Uh, and obviously, you know, I'm cherry-picking some stats here. Like, his his sweet spot percent this season, 29.1, would be uh, the lowest of Mike Trout's career. But you see what I'm talking about with, like, he hits the crap out of the ball. Like, like I can't get over the fact that his stats should be better, but he is the world's unluckiest man. Well, what's important is that Yankees fans understand that what they're seeing is just a good player that is being, you know, very unlucky and that he will bounce back from this if given plate appearances and all that. And they're not being too hard on him. Oh, no, a Yankees fan. They would never be hard on him. They would never they would never use stats, logic and reason to come to a rational conclusion. That's just asking too much out of one fan base. Oh man. Um so I I that that's all I really had to say, but I just wanted to to issue gear. And he's been having a really successful run of as of the last week with the the Yankees winning streak intact. Um these past 7 games I just had it up. God damn it, Josh, why do you do this? <laughs> Oh, folks! If you don't come here for for all of our errors and swearing at ourselves, I don't know why you're here. Um, his his Gary's OPS plus in his last seven games is two thirty five. Um, his la- his OPS plus in his last fourteen games is one sixty one. So he's really starting to turn a corner here, um, which is so refreshing. But it is a uh, it's it's so weird. It is so weird watching him play well but also poorly mm-hmm. yeah that was how i'm gonna put it um anyway and in other news corwin did you did you see um uh white Sox recent uh drafty turned major league player in a very re- short period of time garrett crochet I did not. Or Gary Crotchet. I actually don't know how you say it. I'm going to say no. crochet. No, I did not. Uh, so he just got drafted in the 2020 draft. And Which is pitched. impressive. 
He just pitched like yesterday, two days ago. How old is he? Oh, uh, that's a great question. I didn't bother looking that up. Um, 21. 21. Wow. So he granted, was... he's, a, he's, I guess, a little old for eh, not really. a draft pick. I guess coming out of college, that's the normal age. Um, so he, wow. he is a, he's a left-handed pitcher. He yeah. is 6'6", 218. Uh, he was drafted in the first round, number 11 overall, and was already the number five ranked prospect in the White Sox organization. And he came out pumping gas 101 miles an hour. Wow. Just got drafted this year. And he's throwing yeah. 101 yeah. miles an hour as a lefty. Jesus Christ. Good Jesus Christ, lefty. indeed. Yeah, it's disgusting. So I have his stats up. He's only been in, in one game, so, and he's only faced, I think, three batters um, uh, for a total of having thrown 13 pitches. But um, I still just wanted to look at his stats because it was just so impressive. Right. Um, I, I mean, my, my, so he's thrown four, sorry, nine forcing fastballs and four sliders so far. Uh, the average speed of his forcing fastball Having thrown nine of them, it was 100.4 miles per hour. It's the Holy average of nine shit. fastballs. Jesus, fuck. The average speed on his slider, oh, out of four sliders, is 86.5 miles per hour. So, what what draft pick was he, again? Just refresh my memory. Uh, number, uh, number 11. 11 overall? Yeah. Well, shit. White Sox knew what they were doing. I mean, this this isn't a guy that I knew of as being like one of the top prospects. I really only knew like three or four guys in the draft this year, you know, before it happened, before doing any research, because I didn't do any research. But I feel like a guy who's 21 years old is pumping this kind of heat with this kind of stuff should probably have been a bigger name if he was this pro ready as well but again i'm not a baseball scout you're not a baseball scout we're both stupid people maybe this is just one of those things where it's like they didn't even know what they were getting i i i wonder so all of that i wholeheartedly agree with um just to start because i don't want to make it sound like i'm contradicting you um i also wonder how much of what we just talked about last week is affecting his his play in this season because as we talked about last week um, or this past Thursday, I don't fucking remember which one it was. Um, hmm. The ML MLB teams didn't know there weren't going to be off days and Chicago has in, in the playoffs, I should say, and Chicago just clinched the playoff spot. It's assumed that they were going to go, but they just formally clinched it. Um, and pitching is going to be a huge deal. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if because of the timing of it, it is post that announcement. And about one week before the playoffs actually start, if they bring him up now, assuming he's going to make the postseason roster to try to just pack that postseason roster with as much good pitching as they possibly can. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I have no idea. It's going to be fucking fascinating. Uh, one other thing I'd like to tell you about his four seamer versus his slider uh, his sliders average spin again. It's only been four pitches, but I'm still very excited about this. Um, you should be. I love seeing my ALB team get better. Uh, <laughs> average spin on his slider 2332 RPMs. That's a lot. Uh, I don't have any comparative info in front of me, but off the cuff, 2300 seems like quite a bit. Yeah, I'm gonna pull up um, some some reference stats for us actually, so that I can I can better paint this picture for you. Uh, actually, let me see if I can just do that right now. Um, let's look at some pitching, and let's look at I guess it would be advanced pitching. I assume no. <laughs> oh, pitch type. That's what I wanted. Okay. Oh uh, no, that's not what I wanted at all. <laughs> Pitch info. I know we just did this the other day, like, right? Oh yeah. Like, did we did just do this, right? Yes. 
I see velocity. I see H movement, and V movement, pitch type. Where's the shit I want to look at? God damn it, fan graphs. You fucked me again. I I don't. Corwin, do I know what, what pitches are? Josh, I don't know if we know what anything is. Uh, who am I? What is love? Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Wow. Okay. So I guess I'll just go fuck myself. Um, wow. This is like genuinely. A, and then like, all right. All right. I'm going to gripe now because this is where the, the episode's going. Um, <laughs> so you go to, you go to um, pitch, pitch spin stats on uh, baseball savant and they don't give you the, the spin. They give you the percent active spin. And like, who's that for? I don't, I don't care. That's not what I'm here for. I want spinning spins. I don't, I don't, I don't want active spin percents necessarily. Give me, give me that raw spin number, man. <laughs> I am right there with you. This is the wackiest thing in existence. Just go uh, to, uh, go to, uh, what's his face? Trevor Bowers. Facebook page. He'll have it. Actually, so I have Trevor Bauer's uh, baseball savant page up. Were you aware that he was drafted by the Arizona Diamondbacks? Who? Trevor Bauer. Really? Did he ever play for them? No. <laughs> wow. It feels like he should have. Yeah. <laughs> Sucks for <laughs> you, Arizona. Probably should get your shit together. Yeesh. Yeesh. Not not a great look, Arizona. Um, <laughs> holy shit, Trevor Bauer spins the ball a lot. Wow. Right? Oh, my God. All right, so Trevor Bauer's four-seam fastball is 2,772 RPMs. That's a lot. So that is a lot. So Garrett Richards is about 300 off from that, which um, with, you know, more than one day of Major League experience, uh, fuck, man, he could probably get there. Um, and interesting, his slider is actually a few RPMs shy of that, which I think is really interesting. So Trevor Bauer's slider has um twenty is twenty nine hundred forty eight RPMs, so one hundred and seventy more rotations per minute than than his four seamer Garrett Richards. Sorry, not Garrett Richards. Garrett Crochet's uh, RPM on his slider is twenty three thirty two, or about one hundred and twenty fewer rotations per minute than his four seamer, which is. Honestly, really interesting that it would be less. Um, and the fact that he has thrown that, I don't know, only only four times, but the fact that it can work at least in such contrast uh, to his fastball, that could, if you could get the RPMs up on that, baby, woo, woo, Ooh, baby. that could be a dangerous pitch. But how about that for such a young dude? Game one, pumping 101. Yeah, that's, uh, that's impressive. I'm glad I didn't pick him, uh, or I, never mind, that statement just wouldn't make sense to begin with, so I'm just not going to finish it. <laughs> Welcome to no, the show, I'll finish it. People already think I'm stupid on here, and they should know that. Uh, I was going to say, man, wish I picked him for Rookie of the Year. He has played one game and just got called up. That would be absolutely idiotic trying to pick him, so cool. Get glad yeah. we can get that out of the way. Definitely should not have picked him as <laughs> Rookie of the Year. Nope. Um, uh, just to continue on with the baseball talk for a little bit, uh, the playoffs are around the corner and yes, I could be looking at this after the playoffs, um, actually started or at least at the, after the regular season actually ended, but fuck that. I had the idea today. And so we're going to talk about it today. Uh, the, 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 the stats of teams that are in the playoffs versus not in the playoffs and how that compares, at least in batting anyway, to last year. So, this season, we have a lot of teams going to the playoffs, and one of the big discussion points, at least on Twitter, has been uh, whether or not to keep this playoff format for next season, which, uh, actually, real quick, Corwin, do you have a reaction to that idea? Uh, to keep this playoff format for next year with, you know, extended teams? Yeah, with, uh, with eight teams per league making it. So, 16, uh... 16 teams in, 14 teams out. No, generally, I am against the idea of having, you know, this many um, 
this many teams in a playoff. Yeah, I, I fully supported the the move to a second wild card team. I think you got more teams being buyers. I think you got uh, more teams uh, actively trying to win games than they were act not actively trying to win them. I'm not going to say actively losing, um, but I don't. I by extending it, the bar is do, by extending it to what it it is. I mean, you're going from five teams per per league to eight teams per league. If we want to argue back and forth about the sixth team, we can argue about a sixth team. I think there's arguments to be made on both sides. Sure. I have no clue how you could possibly justify increasing the number of teams by sixty percent and not wanting to and and not seeing the obvious drawbacks there are to that. Um, so I I hate that so much. Um, and I thought this might be an interesting glimpse into what that kind of looks like. So, as it stands right now, we have uh, 14 teams not going to the playoffs. Uh, they are in the American League, uh, the Baltimore Orioles, Boston Red Sox, Detroit Tigers, Kansas City Royals, Los Angeles Angels, Seattle Mariners, and Texas Rangers. In the National League, the Arizona Diamondbacks, Cincinnati Reds, Colorado Rockies, Milwaukee Brewers, New York Mets, Pittsburgh Pirates, not Steelers. Uh, and the Washington Nationals, if I just said your team's name, fuck you. <laughs> what if you said uh, my former really. team's name? Fuck that guy. <laughs> fuck former you. Um, I accept that. So I, I want to just look at like, you know, let's let's average all these teams out. You know, they're kind of all over the place in terms of how well or poorly they're doing. And that will give us just look at the, the, the basic ass slash line. The slash line of the teams not going to the playoffs this year. Is 241, 314, 403 for a 717 OPS and a 92 OPS plus. Oof. So, yeah, not, no, it, it's colossally lopsided because somehow the Mets as a team have a 124 OPS plus, uh, which is bananas. Versus the Texas Rangers that have a 71 team OPS plus. Oh, sorry. That's not the lowest. The lowest, of course, is Pittsburgh at 70. Um, of but course. still. Glad you see that, of course, in there. Naturally. I can't believe I didn't look there first. Um, so it, it, it is a huge spectrum, but still eight points under, uh, under average. Not great. Mm. So where are you expecting the playoff teams to be in terms of We'll go with OPS plus because I think it's the most conversational. Uh, where am I expecting? Sorry, what? What are you asking? Where am I expecting the playoff teams to be with what? With OPS plus. Uh, two hundred and fifty is where I would want them to be. Um, where I expect them, maybe one thirty. Interesting. Uh -huh. So playoff teams so far, just in case you're not keeping up with it, Tampa Bay. Rays, the Chicago White Sox, the Oakland A's, New York Yankees, Minnesota Twins, Cleveland Indians, Houston Astros, Toronto Blue Jays, Los Angeles Dodgers, San Diego Padres, Chicago Cubs, Atlanta Braves, Miami Marlins, Philadelphia Phillies, St. Louis Cardinals, and the San Francisco Giants. All those teams put together give you a slash line of 248, 329, 431, good for a 761 OPS and a 106 OPS plus. Wow. Wow, indeed. Um, interesting note, the team with the highest OPS plus is still not better than the Mets. Um, <laughs> which really just, I guess, just goes uh, to show you how bad the Mets pitching is. Um, so the highest team OPS that is listed here is Corwin. The Padres. The San Diego Padres. Yes. 122, just edging out. Oh, the, the New York Yankees at 121. Corwin and I's uh, teams of choice are doing quite well. Uh, the lowest team here. Do you have any impression of the worst team OPS plus in the playoffs right now? Uh, the worst playoff team in OPS. Um, fuck, who is... Who has great pitching? Maybe the Cleveland Indians? It is the Cleveland Indians. Yes. 80, 84. Oh, I'm a genius. 84. Josh, I need you to understand. I am a genius. 
I guess so. Uh, I would have picked the Giants, but they're actually at 112, which I would have never guessed. Um, uh, mostly because yeah, I don't watch the, the uh, Mike Kitschremski special. Apparently so. Um, so now I have 2019 up as well. So playoff 2020, 106 OPS plus. Non playoff 2020, 92 OPS plus. Um, what is your expectation for the 2019 stats? Uh, ooh, probably a little bit lower. Are we talking average, lowest, highest? Average, average, average. Average, I'll say, is a tiny little bit lower, just because I feel sample sizes and all that. Uh, especially since there's a lot of teams. Well, no, because you would have, excuse me, less teams, and I feel like that would increase the average. So I'll say a little tiny bit higher. All right, so I'm not going to read all the team names because it, I'm, I'm tired of doing that. Um, <laughs> I am done. In 2019, the average playoff, not sorry, non-playoff, the average non-playoff team, OPS plus, was also 92. The exact same oh, as, sure. it, as it is in 2020. So I correctly assumed that I was wrong in every way. And to make matters more interesting, the average playoff OPS plus playoffs playoff, playoff, uh, playoffs in 2020, right. the average playoff OPS plus once again is 106 in 2019 with fewer teams and in theory, better teams. The average playoff OPS plus was 107. Not much better. Hmm. Again, not what I would expect. Me neither <laughs> at all. Um, f- yeah, <laughs> ain't ain't that some shit? I really ain't thought I really thought we'd get a, a much more disparate look between these two teams because not only would you expect the playoff teams to be on average better in a smaller year, you would expect. Actually, I you know so. I would have expected both numbers to be higher because you're taking teams that are good but not good enough out of this year's group and putting them into last into 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 uh, the non-playoff group, which might end up buoying that group because instead of just the bottom bottom of the barrel, you get some like you know mid-level chaff in there too. And instead, it's basically the same, which is weird. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I just, it's hard to make these assumptions. Uh, what's the term I'm looking for? Just without knowing the standard or without knowing what it typically would be, because it just kind of seems out of nowhere. But at the same time, who fucking knows? I don't know. Oh, I, I don't think I've ever known anything. It's true. Again, I've said this like 15 times today. We don't know anything. We're we're just you know, we're just doing our best. <laughs> uh, do you want to hear a little bit about uh, 2020 pitching? Of course. All right. So armed with the knowledge of a 2019, sorry, 2020 non-playoff batting, non-playoff OPS plus of mm-hmm. 92. What is your impression? Of the 2019, sorry, I'm like trying to keep it all in my head. The 20, no, the 2020, Jesus fucking Christ. 2020 OPS for non-playoff teams, 92. What do you think the 2020 ERA plus is for non-playoff teams? For non-playoff teams? Non-playoff teams. I'm going to say, I'm going to guess low. I'm going to say 87 just because of how significantly bad some teams are. Like, the Red Sox are dragging down this average. And the fact that there's less playoff or less non-playoff teams makes me think that there's less teams there to bring up this average. So, yeah, I'll say 87. You, you, went, uh, you went too low. Oh, is it 88? I know. No, it was 95. Wow. 
95. So the 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 best we have here is uh a we have a 121 ERA plus. Can you guess that team? 121 ERA what plus team didn't pitches make the really playoffs. well. Pitches really uh, well. That's horribly. The Texas Rangers? No, they are pitching very, very poorly with their oh not very, very poorly, but 92 ERA don't plus. They got, don't they got Lance Lynn? He's the <laughs> star pitcher. He is a he is a star, but uh, I guess it's just not good enough. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it is the Cleveland Indians, uh, the one twenty one. Okay, I right, should have sorry, known that. Sorry, hold on. Sorry, Didn't Cincinnati Reds. Playoffs, C- Cincinnati Reds, wrong Ohio team. Cincinnati Reds. Okay. Again, yeah, that also makes a lot of sense. They are batting real bad this year. That is a bad, Which, tough look. Yeah, which is a, a shame because like they're 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 pitching so fucking good, mm-hmm. but just cannot put it together in terms of the batting. Um, hold on one second. Who am I forgetting here? Probably a lot. Minnesota. Um. Mm-hmm. All right. So, what is your impression? Sorry, that's you're not going to make any sense yet. What is your, what is your impression of the twenty twenty? Playoff team uh, pitching ERA plus. What was batting so, one twenty? Batting was one oh. Batting was one oh six. I'll say one one twelve. Ooh, interesting. Why? Why so much higher? I don't know. <laughs> That's kind of an out of my ass. Like I feel like pitching has been a lot better this year for the top teams. I feel like it's not a significant increase. That would be crazy. And you know what? I I have no solid evidence or research to go into it, so I'm just going to say 112. Well, Corwin, I am so proud of your intuition because it is 113. I am the smartest baseball fan ever. What Do team? Josh, total non sequitur here. Do you think if we went back and listened, we could make a tally of how many times I say I'm the stupidest and smartest fan when it comes to baseball and see which is more common of an occurrence? Uh, We certainly could. I would not want to, but we certainly could. That was going to be my follow-up question of, I knew you were going to say, yes, we could. And then I was going to ask if there's any chance we ever do, which is almost certainly not. No, that's too much work. I am way too lazy for that. Correct. I'm fully here to admit that to everybody. That is far more work than I would like to do. <laughs> um, hold on one second. Almost. So, what do you think? The, who, which team do you think has the highest ERA plus of the, the playoff highest? teams this year? Ooh. Um. Hmm. It is not close. <laughs> then I don't know. Highest, sure ERA, highest ERA plus? Yeah. The best pitching team? Which team pitches the best? Um, I know I should know this. Oh, you I really feel should. dumb for not knowing it. You should. Uh, I can't. Padres? It's not the Padres. Okay, I was hoping. It's the felt, Dodgers. Yeah, the Dodgers were like initially what I was thinking, and I just I couldn't. I couldn't pull the trigger on that. 144 ERA plus. Fucking stupid high. Damn. Um, next highest, actually, sorry, is close with the Cleveland Indians at 143. And then after that, you have to take a 14-point drop to get to number three on the list for the Chicago White Sox at 129. Damn. Yeah, they're Hot pitching out man. of their fucking minds. Um, all right, so so playoff team... 113 ERA plus non playoff team in 2020, 95 ERA plus. Let's go back to 2019. So, what do you think 2019 non playoff team ERA plus looks like? It was 95, it's 95 for this year. I'll say 97. Nailed it. Yes, the smartest. <laughs> Tally it up. I, I, it's not happening. Uh, right. Okay, so ninety-seven ERA plus for uh, non-playoff teams, twenty nineteen, twenty nineteen playoff teams, 
What's the ERA plus? 107. 112. 112. Ooh. So so the Damn it. I was thinking 112 again it popped into my head but I couldn't pull the trigger. Yeah, you know, I should have gone with your woman's intuition. So once so the the first part of that makes sense to me because mm-hmm. you're taking out like like I said you're taking out the the really the almost good teams that are going to make the playoffs this year that would not have made the playoffs last year. And so there, if you assume, you know, a scalable ERA plus, there is, is there's just probably better than average. And mm-hmm. when you put those in with all the, the direct of society, their ERA plus goes up. So it did. It went from 95 to 97. But the fact that their ERA, the ERA plus for our, our playoff teams went down is interesting. Although looking at it, I can only assume it's because there is no Dodgers and Indians style. Wow, why is your ERA plus so high? Situation mm-hmm. happening. Uh, there is no one above 128. So I I guess that's the only difference. So hold on. Now I'm actually curious. I'm going to take out the Dodgers and Indians and see what that average is for the for for this year. Because that makes sense, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's. Uh, Let's take them out. Delete. Delete. Okay. And that drops the ERA plus for this season down to 109. And that makes more sense to me. Okay. That makes sense to me as well. So that, that all right. So this all tracks that. So, so what I thought should have happened in batting did happen in pitching where the ERA plus of the non-playoff teams with fewer teams making the playoffs, went up because better teams that might have made the playoffs this year are not going to. And the ERA plus of playoff teams also went up. That Now it's from, went from 109 to 112 um, because you have good teams but not great pitching teams that aren't making the cut that would drag this ERA plus down. I solved it. Give me baseball. I am baseball. You are baseball? Baseball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh okay. All right, that's all that's all I had. <laughs> Did you have a good time? I had a great time, Josh. This was a lot of fun. Thanks for inviting me. I'll see you next week. <laughs> well, I, I actually I, 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 I lied. I I do have one more thing. Um so Frank Gore is making uh, is starting for the Jets today, and it will make him the startingest running back of all time. Uh, That's a sentence, sure. It's the one we're going with, <laughs> and I the fact that he's starting is so impressive. The fact that he's playing, this all right. Let me rephrase. The fact that he's playing is very impressive. The fact that he's starting is bananas. Um, course, yeah. So. I guess I'm, I just want to talk about how astonishing that is. Um, so Frank Gore's career, he has averaged a total um, rushing yards of 67.7 rushing yards per game. And he's done that over the course of 227 games to get to his, his present total rushing yards as of before the Jets game today. Uh, uh, 15,000. 371 rushing yards. Actually, you know what? Let's just throw his scrimmage yards in there, too. Uh, 19267 divided by his uh, thing. So Frank Gore, over the course of his career, has been good for just under 85 yards of offense a game. Wow. For 15 years. So, wow. All right. I don't understand Frank Gore. I don't. No. I, just, I don't understand how someone could be that consistently. Yeah. I. Yeah. Fuck. I, I know. It's, it's genuinely like confusing, remarkable, and I, I absolutely just love it. Um, Real quick, so uh, Christian McCaffrey, who is a yards 
from scrimmage machine. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. Yes. Um, he is currently averaging 113.8 yards per scrim- yards from scrimmage per game, which is fucking hilarious. It's too much. <laughs> he needs to, he must be stopped. Um, how, how long do you think it would take him to catch up to Frank Gore in terms of total yards from scrimmage? Hmm. Um, six seasons. Hold on. So divided by what? What did I say? One eighteen. I don't remember. Damn it, Corwin! One of us needed to remember that. I know, but it, it usually shouldn't be me. One thirteen point eight. <laughs> okay. So that would take him. Uh, 169 games. So basically, 10 years. Oh my god. <laughs> so Chris McCaffrey, at today's level of production, which uh, it might be the best he ever does, he might continue to get better, it's so tough to say, um, because he is so freakishly good, and the running back position is confusing. Um, <laughs> but if if he maintained this young man level of production forever... It would take him ten, in all, in all reality, eleven because you you just need a, probably an extra couple games that would bring you into the eleventh season. Um, eleven years to catch up to Frank Gore. I don't think he does that, Josh. I I don't think, I don't think anybody's supposed to do that. Yeah. That's um, that's not that's not possible. I just don't. I just don't get how Frank Gore has only missed like two games in the past 10 years. Wow. Holy shit. That's true. (laughs) Like what? He's unstoppable as a person. Oh my God. What the fuck? I'm looking at it right now. 2019, he played in 16 games. 2018, he played in 14 games. And then 2017, 16. 2016, 16. 2015, 16. 2014, 16. 2013, 16. 2012, 16. 2011, 16. You have to go back to 2010 to the last time he missed a fucking game outside of 2018. And oh my God, what the fuck? Excuse me. That's crazy. Oh, I just um, sneeze and hurt my back. Oh my god, I'm 95. Ugh. And loving it, buddy. Um, <laughs> I will say one one hilarious thing is that Christian McCaffrey will very likely pass Frank Gore in receiving touchdowns this season. Um, Christian McCaffrey so far has 15 for his career. Frank Gore has 18 in his career. Wow. Yeah. That's just fun. Yeah, no shit. Uh, all right, now now I'm out of things. Did you have anything else you wanted to you wanted to chit chat about? Uh, Allen Robinson, just because I saw this today, said that uh, he wants out. Do you think he gets out? Wait, but didn't he just say he he didn't want out? I I meant to say the Bears said they want him to stay. I, be, he wanted out. Bears say they want him to stay long term. Well, I'm sure the Bears are going to say that. What else are they gonna gonna say? Fuck the Bears. Um Oh no, I th- I I think that they if they have a head on their fucking shoulders, they, they get rid of him. Yeah. Again, not to not to cast him away, but to take value. He sh- he is so unlikely to resign there. You should go get something for him. Correct. Are they going to? I don't know. <sighs> So really, I was going to say, really, really I, you know, I think I think Ryan Pace is a good head on his shoulders. He would do it, but he's this is also the man who traded for Nick Foles when when Cam Newton was available for money. So, <laughs> and also less money than Nick Foles. So, who the fuck knows? <sighs> God, they are just they bad. Are struggling. Yeah, they're just bad. That's exactly what I think. Yeah, it's a damn shame. Oh, oh, oh well, oh well. Um. All right, then. Then are we out? I say we're out. All right. If you want to follow the show on Twitter, you can do so at Juicing Pod. If you want to hit us up via email, you can do so at Juice the Numbers at gmail.com. And <laughs> until Thursday, y'all have a good one.